Babies are born every day and every single day they get life saving tests in the hospital. But what happens with the blood samples after that testing is raising some big questions. Chief investigative reporter Lauren Traeger did some digging and you might be surprised what she found out. As long as she in my arms or somebody's holding her, she's fine. Baby Bailey, just a few hours old. She's perfect. <laughs> her mom, so doting. She's perfect. Sleeping sweetly. That is until Dr. Shaquilla Matthew shows up. How are you? Bugging Bailey just to make sure everything's okay. <laughs> Newborn babies are just so cute, right? Dr. Matthew's used to it. Those cries often come, she says, with one of the most vital newborn tests of all. A prick of a baby's heel and several drops of blood collected on a card and sent off to a state lab. It's very important that we do that screen because it checks for rare but serious conditions that can be missed otherwise. Starting first in the 1960s, now every state performs the newborn screening, though a national investigation by KMOV and Gray TV found what's tested for varies by state. Illinois screens for 57 conditions, for example, Missouri, 77 different conditions. Georgia, by comparison, just 35. It's beneficial that Missouri tests for more. The screen, she says, can save lives by detecting very serious conditions like cystic fibrosis or sickle cell anemia. Prevention is very important in pediatrics. Pretty much everyone agrees the tests themselves are immensely important, but it's what happens to the blood samples after the tests that has been raising some very big legal and ethical questions nationwide, especially because each state has their own rules rules about what to do with them. It's just medical privacy, right? An attorney is currently suing over Michigan's newborn screening storage policies, calling them unconstitutional. What the state needs to do is realize that moms and dads get to make the choice, not a government bureaucrat. And in New Jersey, recent uproar from attorneys after learning some newborn baby blood was used by law enforcement. In one case, connecting the baby's father to a crime. The problem is always the unforeseen consequences. Data expert and Webster University professor Scott Graneman says what happens with the blood test could pose problems. DNA is increasingly everywhere and it's going to be used in ways that we don't intend and we don't like. So we wanted to know what do our states do with your baby's blood? Both Missouri and Illinois prohibit law enforcement access. But while Illinois' law does not allow for third party research, Missouri's does, and they store all of the samples for up to five years in these unassuming looking freezers. If you don't want your baby's leftover samples to be sold for study by a third party, you have to opt out by writing a letter to the state. And of the 440,000 babies born in Missouri since 2018, the state has only received about 200 such letters in the same time period. We wanted to talk to the state health department, but they declined an interview. In a statement, a spokesperson highlighted, quote, no such official research request has been received or approved in the last five years. But that doesn't mean they won't have one in the future. And if you haven't opted out, your baby's blood could be sold without your consent. Back at BJC, Dr. Matthew says most parents have few questions about the blood samples. Usually there are parents that could decline it, but mostly pa parents know it's for the benefit of the baby. Baby Bailey's healthy and mom Brittany's not too concerned about where her blood might end up. If it would help more than they can use it, I mean, it's no harm because it's being helpful by they use it, so I wouldn't have a problem with it. Having just given birth, she's more focused instead on getting her bundle home. Comfortable bed <laughs> and um, just relaxing, cuddle time. And she is so cute, too. Well, the state of Missouri says there are many reasons why screening samples are being held on to for a baby's health care team or to help identify a missing or deceased child. They also say that if the samples are used for research, all identifying information is removed from them and the researcher does not know who the baby is. Still, those raising concerns about the storage of the samples stress that parents should know all they can about what might happen with those samples. So we've got a ton more information for you at KMOV.com and the KMOV News app. I'm Lauren Traeger, News 4 Investigates.